All right. Welcome, everybody, to the 2018 municipal election Q&A with the candidates for this year's municipal election. Come on in. Grab a seat. If you're late, you have to sit up front. <laughs> so I just did the draw for the order of the speeches. So how this is going to work is that each candidate gets two minutes to introduce themselves and give their opening remarks. I will be timing. At the end of two minutes, you get, and that means next person. Um, qu questions um, that will be occurring will be those that have been sent in by email first. Once those are done, we'll be taking questions from the floor. Questions will be one minute. You'll have one minute to ask your questions, and candidates will have two minutes to answer the questions. Then at the end, candidates will have two minutes of once again for their closing remarks, and then we'll do the closing remarks in reverse order Then we just pulled. So yes. So the way it's going to work. The individuals we select to represent us on the District of Chetwin Council are our closest connection to local government. Their decisions have greater impact on our lives than most national decisions. Yet during the last election, Chetwin had a very low turnout for the, for, their, for the election, for the municipal election, which means our council was chosen by a handful of residents and not the majority of our population. And this really needs to change, which is I'm really happy to see everybody out here this evening. I am hoping to hold a second one um, prior to October 20th to the election, so keep an eye out. I'm hoping to have the um, school district candidates here as well. Your vote, your vote is very important, which is why the chamber is going to be um, hosting our Business Excellence Awards, and I know that is at the same time as the election. It just happened to turn out that that was the dates we could get. It was a weird coincidence. But if you come to the Business Excellence Awards and you can prove to me that you voted, you get a prize. So I'm going to bribe you to get out there and vote. And I'm going to bribe you to get your friends to go out there and vote. OK, so the order of introductions today will go Mel, Mel Deck, Laura Weisgerber, Clay Bassendowski, Alan Kurtray, Alec Brownlee, Rochelle Galbraith, Merlin Nichols, Janet Wark, and Jocelyn. Really? Disher. Sheesh. Somehow I slipped back to a previous life there. So, um, there is paper and pens up here at the table, so if you have a question, a burning question that's on your mind, feel free to jot it down and bring it up to me. All right. So let's begin. So two minutes, and I'm going to set the timer. And it's Mel who can do his two minutes introduction. Hi, my name's Mel Deck. I've lived in Chetwin for a little over 35 years. I'm re retired from the sawmill that I worked for at 30 years, and I run a small painting company. Um, I didn't. My wife told me to write down a speech, but um, I, I just couldn't keep it in me. That's that's really not how I roll. I'm not a speech guy. Um, I think my the, my best words come from my heart. Um, I'll be a voice for your hard-earned tax dollar, and that's the only thing I can promise. Thank you. All right, next up is Laura Weisgerber. And I have to hit play on this one. Laura recorded her today, or a few days ago, to have played here this evening. She's unable to be here today. Good evening, everyone. First of all, I would like to apologize for not being able to be with you this evening. I am in Vancouver at a medical appointment, and we know how hard they are to reschedule. I would like to thank the Chamber of Commerce and Peace FM once again for making it possible for me to provide you with this introduction, because I know how important this evening is. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Laura Weisgerber. I have lived in Chetwin for more than 50 years. I moved here with my family when I was five years old and graduated in 1979 from Chetwin Secondary School. I started work at the TD Canada Trust in 1980 and worked on and off for 26 years. 
I retired from the bank in 2006 and started at AIM Trucking a few months later and been there ever since. I have sat on the executive for the Chetwin Curtain Club for many years and Ladies Club at Natural Springs Golf Course. As well, I have supported the many clubs and organizations that are active in our community. I celebrated my 35th wedding anniversary this year and enjoy the full support of my husband as well as my two sons who continue to make Chetwin their home. I am seeking re-election this year and ask for your support. I have worked hard over the last two terms keeping Chetwin a place that is fair and enjoyable for everyone who calls Chetwin home. The work we have done on our infrastructure over the last several years is incredible and rewarding. We have a new water treatment plant and an updated sewer treatment system that will benefit our citizens for years to come. I have enjoyed being part of a great council who works hard and along with staff make a great team to better our community and make it a great place to live. If you re-elect me, I will continue to work hard for you. I believe in our community and will work hard to make it a great place to be. I am sorry I am missing the question period this evening, but please, if you would like to ask me any questions or would like to just talk to me, please call me. I have left my brochures at the front desk with my contact info in them. Again, have a great evening and thank you. So yes, Laura has dropped off um, brochures. They're up here on the front, on the front table on your way in. All right, so third up is Clay Bafnowski. Good evening. I looked at what I said here four years ago, and I'm happy to say that my vision out and outlook has not changed. I was also happy to see that I had no desire to change or fix council if elected. And why would I? I didn't feel council needed to be fixed, and I still don't. As elected officials, it's our primary focus to provide the services that the town needs. I'll be honest, before my term, I had no idea what was involved in keeping the taps running and the waste flowing. I was lucky to have stepped onto a council who had begun to ta tackle these issues, and together we've upgraded and repaired so much of our infrastructure, such as our sewer system, water treatment plant, and East Trunk Main, to name a few. And we have a solid 10-year infrastructure revitalization plan in place. Basic services infrastructure is the building blocks of any community. And our building blocks are old and crumbling, which is nobody's fault, just time. Time is relentless and unforgiving, but pipe by pipe and line by line, we're fixing our town. I've been asked before, why do I like Chetwin so much? Well, why wouldn't I like Chetwin? It's given me the opportunity to have a wonderful career with one of Canada's top 100 employers and has everything we need to raise a happy and healthy family. Truthfully speaking, I'm a positive person and I'd be happy wherever I lived. Community comes from the people who live there coming together and enjoying the positive things that the community has to offer. I feel my place on council has been to advocate for youth, which clearly doesn't do me a lot of good on voting day, seeing as though they can't vote. But seriously, our youth is important. They're our future and they need to be represented. And something I didn't expect to have such a strong advocate for was mental health and addictions. Until I was on council, I really wasn't exposed to the issue, but it's very real and it affects all of us, either indirectly or directly. And I won't quit advocating for those people. Please enjoy your evening, and I look forward to answering your questions. Next up is <laughs> Alan Coutre, and he's a newcomer this year to, to council. So you have two minutes. OK. Uh, my name is Alan Coutre. I've lived in this community uh, since I was eight years old, so now I'm only 27. <laughs> so I, I just turned 60 this year, and I retired from the mill uh, Canfor. I worked there for 41 years, uh, and I uh, enjoyed this community. There's stuff uh, that uh, that we don't have choices in, uh, like uh, who your who your parents are and how old you are. So there's stuff like that, but there's choices where where we do have and where we live. And Chetwin is my choice, and it's been my choice since I was uh, bought a house here. So I had to live here. No, I didn't have to. I wanted to. Okay, uh, what I did, I worked there for uh, several years. I played minor sports in uh, Chetwin and um, <coughs> Little League, minor hockey. Uh, I received this little mark right here, just about lost my eye uh, playing hockey, and we had that little mouth guard. Well, that little mouth guard that we had when we were we were younger, and it just covered enough 
but it didn't cover the eyes. So, you know, when you play minor sports, like uh, Clay uh, says, we need to uh, involve our youth. And that's the, that's the stones that we have to pave is with the youth. We have to be able to, we were all there one time. We have to be able to do that. And as for uh, infrastructure, he's touched base with that, which is great. And uh, progression is one of the big things that we need to look forward to. Because if you sit on your hands, you just keep them warm, that's all. So that's one of the things that we need to do is make sure that progression is one of the things that uh, I would be uh, involved with, uh, progression of involving everyone. Uh, inclusion would be my, my, one of my platforms that I would be standing on, making sure that inclusion is one of the biggest things that we would all be involved in as taxpayers, as citizens of Chatwin. I went through all this minor hockey stuff and I was honored in 2010 as Volunteer of the Year, which was really great. <laughs> so anyway, thank you very much for that. And I got a healthcare, healthcare is one of the big things that I'd like to have. And you'll see it uh, in the next year. And <laughs> Next, if you pa oh, pass the mic down to Alec Brownlee. I would have been more than happy to let Alan talk a while longer. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, my name is Alec Brownlee, for those of you who don't know, and, and thanks everybody for coming out and listening to all of us tonight. Um, of course, uh, I just did bullets down here, and I'm going through them all, and Clay's covered a bunch, and Alan covered a bunch. Uh, we are on a, a track for repairing all our infrastructure. We're constantly, constantly chasing medical, uh, hospital, uh, but we need to, I, I believe that we need to concentrate a little bit on our education and we, we fought hard to get doctors. We need teachers, um, from what I can understand. We're short a few this year. And, uh, I know there's not a lot as a council we can do about it, but we can sure put pressure on them, the same as we did with the doctors, and we gotta keep that up. Uh, child care, education I've got down here. Uh, attention and reten uh, uh, attraction and retention of families. Without, without retaining more families in our town, we, we're gonna end up with camps, but, which is even our apartment buildings that have uh, limit 18 kid, 18 years and under can't live with you. Well, that's that's a camp in my mind. If you can't have your family here, it's a camp. You may not have a cook house, but um, and of course our working relations with our neighbors, our First Nations, uh, vitally important. Uh, we've uh, got, had a better relationship with them in the last few months than than what I can remember for the seven years that I've been on council. And I would like to continue and, and build on that. So, and that is about it. I'm looking forward to your questions. And, and thank you, uh, Naomi, for uh, having this little soiree. So. <laughs> Rochelle? <laughs> well, thank you. Um, thank you, Naomi, for organizing this for us tonight. And. Um, just want to welcome everybody. I'm glad to see there's a, a turnout, um, hopefully next time, and we can see a larger turnout. So, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Rochelle Galbraith, and for the last seven years, I've had the pleasure of representing Chetland um, and serving you as a counselor for the District of Chetland. Um, I've been a part of this community growing up, living and working here for over 50 years, and of those years, 27 within the municipality, along with my husband of 36 years, um, we have two adult children who are now starting their own families outside of Chetwind, and we're the proud grandparents to three beautiful little boys. So not only did I have the privilege of living here and raising our children here, I've had the privilege of being involved in many clubs and organizations throughout Chetwind, uh, the Kids Sport Allocation Committee, the Junior Golf Natural Springs Program, Family Footprints Genealogical, Air Cadets, uh, Deputy Coordinator for the Municipal Emergency Plan, just to name a few. But during my last seven years on council, I've, had to get a, I've got a better understanding of how local government works and how it affects the decisions that we make and how we do business. 
I've demonstrated my commitment and my passion for my responsibilities, and I've dedicated my time and energy needed to address the issues uh, we face on a daily basis and to ensure the decisions we made are in the best interest of the citizens in Chetland. We've accomplished a lot over the last seven years, and I am pleased to have been a part of that. There's many more issues out there that uh, we still face today, and these are issues that we can't lose sight of. They've all been touched on a little bit by all of the speakers here tonight, so I won't go over them again. And um, I feel that if re-elected, I can make a difference in those decisions. So I want to say thank you, and I'm looking forward to your questions this evening. Thank you. Next up is Merlin Nichols. Sorry, folks, I'm not crippled. I've just been shoveling sand today, and uh, it seems to have one of the side effects is that I have a hard time standing up. Anyway, my name is Merlin Nichols, and um, I came here with my family when I was nine years old in 1949, so Chetland has a long history with me, and I've had a long history with Chetland. I've been, uh, my wife and I moved back here in 1970, and except for a couple of years away for various things, we've been here ever since. And we've been together for 55 years this spring, so we have a fairly long history together and a long history in Chetland. I was uh, four, four terms on council before I became mayor seven years ago, and uh, the seven years has been the best time of my life. You might ask, well, why did you want to step away from the best time of your life and, uh, and, and uh, run for council? Well, I, there's such a great set of council candidates here, I just wanted to join them. Um, actually, being the mayor has a fairly heavy workload. And I'm to the point in my experience where I really don't want that workload. And I, I made that public way back in the spring and uh, came up to two, three weeks ago. I had never even, it hadn't crossed my mind. And then I said, well, you know what? You could run for council. So I tried. There are two things that I want to, um, to, to pursue if I'm reelected. The two most important things in my mind right now are flood mitigation, we've all experienced floods, and caribou recovery. Caribou recovery is, is probably the single most uh, uh, important issue that Chetland is facing. And if we don't address it right, we are going to be in deep, is that a bell? Anyway, don't forget caribou recovery when you vote. All right, you can pass the mic on down to Janet. Thank you. Hello, and thank you for coming out tonight to get to know the candidates. My name is Janet Wark, and I'm running for council for the District of Chetland. Last year, I decided I was ready to get involved in local government and serve this community that I love. Chetland is home to me and my family, and I want it to remain a great place to raise a family and work. Having attended council meetings for the past year, I have a good idea of the issues Chetwin faces and the process in which they are resolved. I am committed and I would like to contribute my experience and knowledge to this community by addressing issues the citizens of Chetwin have. Through my past employment in Chetwin and through family, I've established many roots in the community and I understand what a unique and special place Chetwin and surrounding area and its people are. I have been involved in an array of committees, boards, and organizations over the years, and I'm currently a board member of the Pine Valley Seniors Association, as well as a, a member of the Chetwin Hospital Foundation, the Royal Canadian Legion, Friends of the Library, and the 100 People Initiative. I am also an active volunteer at my daughter's school and former volunteer with Chetwin Victim Services. I feel I am able to lead with integrity, accountability, and respect and in collaboration with other elected officials and local gov government staff. 
qualities essential to the effectiveness and success of local government. I want to represent you, the citizens of Chetwin. You as electors play the important role of electing an efficient, competent, and reliable team that will work well together, respect each other, and make decisions that work best for you and this community. Thank you. And last but not least, Jocelyn Disher. Well, I am in some very esteemed company here. So, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jocelyn Disher, and I have called Chetland home for 25 years in July. Both of us, Joel and myself, brought our boys here, and we raised our kids as a family in Chetland. We were only going to stay here for five years, and everybody always said to me, how long have you lived here? Because you're a lifer. I said, no, actually I'm not. <laughs> but I've been here for many years temporarily. Well, about three years ago, I changed my tune and decided, no, Chetwind actually is home. And when I'm at home, I support my home. Thus, I have decided to throw my name in for council. I care about my community deeply. I care about the people in this community. And I truly believe that working 21 years at the public library, I know this community. I am willing to listen. I have an open door policy at work. I am very honored to have a boss who is letting me do this. So for her, I'm very thankful. So I really look forward to um, representing you, hearing your voice, and taking your voice to the council meetings. So thank you very much for your support, and I look forward to your questions. Wonderful, thank you so very much. So I had actually quite a few questions emailed in to me at the office over the last couple of weeks. So I'm going to just choose them randomly. So again, all the questions um, are two minute answers and they will be timed. And then when we're done the answers, we'll take, or when we're done the questions that have been emailed in, we'll take questions from the floor. Just a reminder again, we do have paper and pen up there in case it's a burning question, you gotta write it down. Oh. Our first question is, what do you see as the top three issues facing our community today? So the top three issues facing our community today. Okay, so I believe, um, and Mayor Nichols had hit uh, the, uh, the one, two, sorry, <laughs> flood mitigation. Flood mitigation is so important for this community. We, it's devastated this community. The 100 year flood has hit us five times in the last 20 years. So I'm not sure how many hundredth year that flood that is, but um, we really do need to focus on flood mitigation. Um, affordable housing is another um, issue that Face, uh, that Chetwin faces. Um, it's not just Chetwin, though, unfortunately. It's all across Canada. Every community is facing affordable housing issues. So we need to work with the provincial government. We need to work with uh, developers to, to come up with a plan to build some affordable housing and, and work with them. And the third one that also affects Chetwin, but also again affects every community across Canada is the infrastructure, the stuff that you can't see, the stuff buried under the ground. Um, it's failing, it's 50 years old plus for Chetwin and it's everything, it, it, there is a ticking time bomb and, and it's expensive and we have, we have to be diligent and to get it repaired before it's catastrophic. So those are the top three issues that I feel are facing our community today. Yeah, I have to agree. I'm not going to stand up because I feel I don't, I'm not any taller that doing that. So <laughs> I agree that the flood mitigation, of course, we are working on it. It's not like we've left it and, you know, oh, we should work on it tomorrow. We are working on it now and we will continue to work on it, I'm sure. And it, it is 
vitally important. Um, I hate seeing the water running down through the middle of the cow tire and those places. And, um, affordable housing, I agree. Uh, that's part of my, when I, when I said attract and retain uh, families, if you don't have affordable housing, how do you attract them? Who, what young family can afford to pay uh, half a million dollars for a home? It's, uh, it's almost undoable, or at least it was when I was a young man and, and starting a family. Uh, caribou recovery is important to the North Peace and, and the South Peace, and important to Chatwin, of course. Uh, the uh, health, of course, is important as well. The three, three things, oh my goodness, it's hard to keep it to just three. But we have a huge job ahead of us uh, carrying on with what we're doing, so, but, so I would say that that's the three that I would choose. I'm not really sure if I can add to that list. Um, definitely existing mayor and council would know best about um, the top three issues facing Chetwin. Um, I think if I were to add to that list, I mean, Alec did mention health and definitely, you know, the retention of the doctors here in town. It's, it's really good right now. It needs to stay good. We need to do whatever it takes to keep the doctors that we have now. Um, it's not an important issue uh, really facing Chetwin that it's probably discussed in council, but I think a 20% voter turnout is one of the saddest things a community really has going for it. Um, I don't know any other communities that are less than that, uh, most or more, and you know, it's great that everybody's here this evening, but this room should be expanded every way it can and a full house. Thank you. Yeah, the candidates here uh, talked about the democratic way. So uh, one of the things that I, I do believe that uh, the d democratic way is uh, is the way because everybody's inclusive in it, as I stated in my uh, my re uh, opening remarks, and healthcare. Healthcare. Uh, there is a lot of uh, companies out there, and that use our services. They're around our community, and they come into our community to use our healthcare system, our swimming pools, and all that. So these people, when I say these people, I mean companies. They should be involved in what we do in our community. And as council and mayor, we should be all asking these people to support us in our little community. And the other uh, service, that, well, other point, I think one of the things that uh, we just lost uh, our, our ability to get out of town. And I, I mean that for the people that can't afford uh, insurance for a vehicle, in uh, the right to maintain a license uh, to get get to places. And we've just lost that service here in this small community because we lost that ability uh, through uh, our uh, bus service. So that that's the three that I, I would touch on. And, uh, and these uh, councillor uh, candidates here touch on some of the points too, but those are the ones that I, I believe that we should be uh, going on. Please go for it. Thanks. Um, I'm not sure if this would be the top three, but three that come to my mind anyhow. Uh, always infrastructure. Um, like I say, basic services is, is the building blocks of every community. Um, the labor versus economic balance. Uh, we're having a hard time filling jobs in town. Uh, a very hard time filling jobs in town. Um, and how do you attract people to town? Uh, we need room for growth. Um, if, if more housing is needed, it can't be just tacked on. It has to be a bigger picture. You know, the water line eventually is going to have to go to the end of the road, and that's something that we're struggling with right now. We've had lines tacked on, tacked on, and tacked on, and it wasn't it wasn't done properly. So now we've got to go back and redo it. So forward thinking and making sure that someday houses are going to be all the way down there, and and let's do it right from the get go. Um, also, everything from recreation to healthcare to education, um, housing for families, just everything that it takes to attract families. And the other thing I would probably touch on is public engagement. Um, 
Janet touched on that, like a voter turnout, I think last time was 22%, very similar to Fort St. John, and, and the Peace Notorious lead uh, is a little bit um, lower. Um, public engagement, we, we called the meeting tonight, and it's an okay turnout. There could be a lot more. Uh, we had a, a town hall meeting with Mike Bernier there not too long ago, and I think between Mayor and Council and Janet, I think you were there, and I think between us, there was two people there. So in UBCM and in LGLA, uh, we learned that public engagement just doesn't always mean public meetings. I mean, if that's working, fine. Um, if it's not, what else are you doing? I know that the district has started to put out um, on social media some updates, and we know how many times that these pages are hit, and it's been quite popular, and, and people seem to be uh, informed. So that's one step. Um, it's how do we get the feedback? And we haven't figured that out yet. Um, <laughs> free food, it's not a bad idea. Um, there usually is food there, by the way, anybody listening. But yeah, uh, we gotta figure that out. And, and there's people out there that can help. Thank you. Um, uh, the three most important things to, for me and Chetron would be healthcare professionals, retention and recruitment, and uh, a vigilance on that. I don't think we're, we're completely out of the, um, out of the, out of the, the dark right now at, at any time we could lose two or three doctors we have to continually be working on that and and nurses is another problem as well and it's not often we have a full staff of nurses up at the hospital um, also um, we, people have touched on um, housing I think the housing should not only be for lower income but for middle income people as well there's not a lot of people that can afford a three or four hundred thousand dollar home we have to have a wide wide variety for, for people to choose from, and, and recruiting workers in the area as well, and keeping workers here, not just coming to camp or not just coming to an apartment. No, I'm not going to um, repeat what has been said already. All of that is extremely important. All of it is on Council's mind and has been over the years. We've been working on it. I do want to stress the importance to Chetwind of a successful outcome in our negotiations with government, the provincial government and the federal government over caribou recovery. If we don't succeed on that, we could, it would have devastating effects on the economy of Chetwind. Every person here is, is going to be affected. So many people out there are saying, shut it down, shut the bush down, shut the industries down. Serve the caribou, and I'm not opposed to saving caribou, but I'm opposed to destroying human lives in the process, and that is what we're working on. As for uh, uh, flood mitigation, we've done some significant steps there. We've made some inroads in government, and once again, there are, there are um, regulations that prevent us from doing uh, the uh, mitigation work that needs to be done at the right time. Our resolution at, uh, from Chetland at the UBCM last week passed, which uh, is now it's going to go to government, and we've been to government on this ourselves, to allow us to get into these streams and clean them out, clean the debris, clean the accumulation of gravel that, that uh, prevents the uh, flow of water so that the next time we do get a uh, heavy rain event, and we are going to get a heavy rain event, be sure of that, but the next time, we're hoping that we will have done some work prior to the rain so that it has some place to flow rather than down South Access Road. Um, being a new potential member to council, there's a couple of things that have been brought to my mind or to my attention actually through the library, and one of them through Chetwin that's huge right now is the lack of childcare. We cannot expect young families to come to this town and make this town home without viable childcare. So that is huge. So that's one of the things that comes up in the library. Another thing is teachers, education, keeping viable teachers in our town. And another thing is transparency. Our 
constituents in this town want to, um, they want their government to be transparent. They want everything out in the open. And it's really good to see you guys embracing social media and putting things out on social media because our generation and younger is all about social media. That's how they stay informed. So it's really good to see the districts embracing that to get their opinions out and to get their um, results from from whatever meetings you've gone to or whatever. But transparency, information, childcare, and retaining education, educated teachers, those are the ones that I'm hearing about at the library. So the next question that came in was, what neighborhood in Chetwin do you live in? If you live outside of the d town boundaries, how will you connect with our residents? Uh, this one has always been a very interesting uh, question for myself. I live on Wabi Hill. I live on Hayward Road. I can't vote for anybody in here. My husband can't vote for me. So I uh, had posed this question once before and I got told, do you enjoy lower taxes? Because you pay your taxes to PPRD, and, or Peace River Regional rather, and not to the District of Chetwin. However, I use the District of Chetwin. I use the facilities, I use the gym, I use the rec center, I use the library, I use our grocery stores, I drive on our streets. My children went to the schools here. So yes, I think I should have a voice as well. So I live in the Crown Sub, uh, 4904 45th Street. Uh, we've lived there for what did I say, 37, 38 years, something like that. So, no, I live with any municipality. I, I know. <laughs> I, uh, I live in town now, too. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> um, of course, I lived out of town for the, a number of years. Connecting with town isn't, um, because you live out of town doesn't mean you're not connected. Um, you, as she said, you, we use the facilities for town. Um, I've hauled water and uh, dumped my RV in the waste. It, it's not, how do you stay connected? <laughs> you stay connected by being involved in what's going on in town. If you show up at these meetings and uh, go to the chamber luncheons and it just, be out there where people can see you and where you see people. That's how I stay involved in the in district. So. What neighborhood in Chetwin do you live in? And if you live outside the boundaries of the town, how will you connect with our residents? I live in the rodeo subdivision. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure of the question. So if I lived out of the boundaries, how would I connect? Yes. Okay. If you live, so you live, if you live in Chetwood. Which I do. But if you're, if you're running for council and you live outside of the boundaries, how do you connect back with the residents? Okay. Well, the way I feel about that is that Chetwin is so small that, I mean, I used to live out, outside of the boundaries, so, and it didn't make a difference in my life and in the way I connected with people, right? So you have friends in town, they have friends out of town. Um, you conduct all your business in town. So um, your place of work, your you know activities, you take advantage and use all the, um, you know, everything in town, the rec center, the library, uh, everything that the town offers, I use. And I did use when I lived out of town. So that didn't make a difference in my residence. Uh, as far as connecting with uh, the other people in town and as a counselor if I were elected um, I think that's extremely important and like Jocelyn said I love the idea of social media I don't know exactly how that would look but I would take I, I would try it I would try social media I think you know I have read on other counselors and other municipalities pages 
it was wonderful. Uh, people would ask questions on their pages and the counselor would answer them. The counselor didn't have an answer, you know, they would find an answer. And it was, it was, it was really positive, so I love that idea. Yeah, I live uh, down uh, 48, 52nd Avenue, uh, just up from uh, Wabi Crescent, Sesame Street, as uh, people know from uh, history of Chatwin here. So that's where I lived. And uh, the connection, uh, if you're the, you know, I, I really uh, have uh, not a hard time with it, but I, I look at it as if you're going to be in council or you're going to be mayor, uh, like Josh uh, said, would you can't even vote for yourself, you know? Is that the connection, or is there something that we're missing, right? And that's the point that I always think about: is that where where a person lives, and yet contribute. I think that's a connection right there. So when you are uh, connected to the community, you are connected to the community because you support us by running, by doing stuff like that. So that that there to me is the connection. So. Good for people like that, but yet I have this little thought in my brain with, don't you live in Chatwin? Everybody lives in Chatwin. Um, thank you. <clears throat> so yeah, I live in the rodeo grounds, um, 5, 5123441st Street. If you care, we give out full-size chocolate bars at Halloween. We're kind of famous for that now. <laughs> um, <Okay>. So... <laughs> <laughs> More food. <laughs> So we hear this topic come up a fair bit. Why can't people out of town vote? Um, I'm not saying I agree with it or disagree, but I can say the basic reasons are is that 90% uh, of what we do on council involves the garbage pickup, the paving of roads, the water system, the sewage system, these types of things. So like the majority of our time is spent on that, which, which um, I wouldn't say isn't a concern for people out of town, but not as much. Of course, we all come in town and use these services and, and whatnot, but the people out of town vote for their regional district director. And the other thing of it is, is that where do you put the boundary? Where is the voting boundary for Chetwind? Um, people that live at Powder King, do they vote for Mackenzie or do they vote for Chetwind? Uh, these, these are some of the reasons, but that by no means um, means that, that somebody from out of town can't care about the community as much as what I do. And... Um, so you don't vote for the town because you don't use the super services as much, that doesn't mean that you're not qualified to make decisions on behalf of those services. So absolutely the people from out of town can have every bit as much of a connection uh, uh, for what they need on council as, as those of us that do live in town. And the fact that Joe can't vote for Jocelyn might just put him out of an awkward situation. <laughs> <laughs> I strongly believe everyone in this room is connected to our town, and um, I live in. I live in. I happen to live in town myself. I previously lived out Jackfish Lake Road many years ago, and Chetwin's still still home. I, I I don't really think it's an issue. I don't see it as an issue either. Although I do live out of town, probably as far out of town as anyone here. No, not McKenzie. <laughs> I'm up the Jackfish Road, um, but I've been I've been connected with Chetwin ever since I was nine years old. And Chetwin is my home. I don't I don't you know there is there is a, a legal and political boundary there, but I don't uh, I don't feel bound by it in any sense. Um, we have to work very cooperatively with the regional district, and we have. We have to maintain that close relationship because so much that we have in town, our rec center, our um, fire department, all of these things are, are very much a part of the funding of the regional district as they are of Chetland. And we have to maintain that close relationship with our regional district partners in this business if we're going to have success as a district of Chetland. What you said? No. All right. Is it working now? You're going to answer the, the next question. We'll come back this way. Okay. What previous experience do you have that is an asset to council? For example, 
What other boards have you volunteered on? What other council experience have you had? Okay, 10 years on council, seven years as mayor, 13 years on a university board. And that's enough on a university board. Uh, previous to being on council for the last four years, I had very little experience with any boards or anything we did. I did quite a bit of volunteer work over the years, but uh, I think working in a team environment at West Fraser for 30 years and running my own company for 30 years, uh, keeping putting people first as, my, as in my customers, I think that gave me uh, enough knowledge to uh, put people first. Uh, I guess my four years on council would be the most relevant um, experience. And, and uh, before that, um, you know, administration guides us. Uh, they look for grants. They tell us what's wrong. Uh, they throw a budget in front of us. And anybody that's had a household that knows you can't spend more than what you bring in or else bad things are going to start to happen. So it's, uh, it's a matter of, as an elected official, to be able to connect with your community. And do I connect with you? And if it's up to you to, to decide if I've got the qualities to be on, on your council or not. Yes, for myself, uh, I uh, ran the Friendship Center as uh, the chair, uh, chair there for 11 years. And uh, the local union, I sat on uh, as chairman there. And uh, minor hockey, I sat on the committee there. So I've got a little bit of experience uh, dealing with, uh, with adults and along with kids. And uh, if I was to choose, I'd pick the kids. So anyway, that was the most gratifying of all my uh, 10 years was uh, coaching and dealing with uh, individuals. And each one of us and those kids that we deal with uh, are individuals. And that's the way we should be. And I believe that's the way people should be. And um, the other thing, <clears throat> I uh, worked in the saw filing department at uh, Canfor, and I ran the shop for 20 years. So I dealt with that all there. And same as kids, they're uh, individuals, and you have to treat them that way, and make not as kids, as individuals. So anyway, that's, that's my uh, tenure, and I, I've got some experience on board, so I believe that I, I will do the best I can, the best my ability. Uh, I feel that I do have some leadership role experience in my past um, employment history. Um, you know, along with that, uh, I, I feel like I have a lot, pretty extensive dealings with the public in the past uh, with different positions. Like I mentioned earlier, I sit on uh, a few, uh, while well, I'm on the board for the PBSA and then a member of a few other uh, organizations in Shetland. Um, I feel that my past experience in those organizations and in my work history has prepared me for a position to sit on council. Well, other than my seven years on council already and uh, my 15 years as a superintendent, maintenance superintendent, uh, looking after uh, I, the shops uh, for Caribou Road Services, I also volunteered on the PVEP for a few years. don't remember how many. didn't seem very long. Uh, and a coach for uh, baseball is when my uh, children were younger and, uh, of course, a Cub Scout leader. So... Um, that's about it. Thank you, Alec. Um, over the um, last, well, seven years being on council, uh, the Local Government Leadership Academy is um, amazing for offering uh, leadership um, courses and things like that. So I've taken advantage of that. And I know a couple of us on council have. And it gives you a better understanding, like I said earlier in my opening, of uh, what local government is how to work with uh, ministries, the province, the federal government, and things like that. So that's been really important. And um, prior to uh, being elected seven years ago, I was uh, worked for Northern Lights College for several years and had the honor of uh, being um, on their education council, where we worked with the Ministry of Education, building policies and things like that around curriculum and stuff like that. So, and just being that part of education was really important for the college. 
um, when you're on council, you're assigned many, many committees. And um, I've been on the library, Pub Chapman Public Library Board for the last seven years. And I have a way better understanding on how the Chetwin Public Library Board actually functions, and it's amazing. Um, along with that, I sat on several different committees within the uh, within council. So that would be my experience. Thanks, Rochelle. Um, let's see here. When the boys were little, we were a hockey family, so minor hockey board took up a lot. I'd say probably close to eight years I sat on the minor hockey board. From minor hockey, I graduated on to Spickers. Um, so now I work with Katie on the Spickers board here in town. I've also sat on kids sport in town. Um, I still do, actually. And back in my life previous to Chetwind, I did a lot of motivational speaking with one of the companies that I worked for. So I believe that my public speaking abilities came from there. And um, the library has allowed me to refine those by hosting Ladies Who Lunch. That's a little pet project of mine. And Bursting with Brilliance, which is the latest women's conference that Chetwind is now hosting. <laughs> so that's about it for me. As you know, it's easier to keep jobs than attract new ones. If elected, how would you help the home building and development industry be more resilient, especially during economic downturns? That's a tough one. <laughs> we were actually talking about that at work the other day. Um, if you could get investors to come into town and build up these beautiful new subdivisions and apartment blocks and whatnot, that would be wonderful. But what happens if the pulp and paper industry dies out? What happens if the mines go under again? Um, we've all seen Chetwin, I mean, everybody on here, I don't think there's anybody who's been here less than 20 years. I'm probably the newbie here. We've all seen booms and busts in Chetwin. How did we handle it? We haven't had a whole bunch of growth in our housing industry lately. Um, we need to take a risk, maybe? I'm not sure. Um, a little bit of experience on the council, I might have a better answer for you. Thank you, Jocelyn. So that's a, that, that is a, that's a really good question, actually. And it's probably, for me, one of the more difficult ones to answer, only because you have to encourage developers and you have to really entice developers. They need to want to come here. They're business people. They're not going to come here and build houses that aren't going to get bought. And it's happened in the past. So it's, um, you know, we've worked with developers trying to find them the right property, trying to help them um, look at land surrounding Chetwind, within Chetwind, and even sometimes sell them our property so they can come in and develop their 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 houses and things like that. But um, I, I, I don't know that I have, a, have an answer. I mean, it's, it's a tricky one. It is a tricky one. How do you convince a businessman to spend some money that he may or may not retrieve? <laughs> it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, I know my first term in on council, we had a, a tax break for people that would build a fourplex or bigger, and it was surprising how few people actually took advantage of it. E even though you offer it up, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to take it. So. It is a good question. It's not an easy one to answer, and, but I'm sure if the seven people on, that get elected on council put their head together, we can figure something out to attract some house builders, local house builders, hopefully, to, to uh, go into the market and uh, take the risk. They, if they're businessmen, that's part of their business is the risk that they take when they do it. So. Um, and, and all we can do is help them in, uh, on the tax side, possibly. And, and, and again, it's just a, it's a possibility. So, uh, But like I said, if the seven of us put our heads together, if I happen to get elected, or the seven people that do get elected put their heads together on it, I'm, I'm sure they can figure out a way to attract that investment into the town. 
Yeah, the only thing I can think of just not knowing, um, not having any experience in that is, you know, possibly a, a tax break for a new business into, you know, some type of incentive. I don't know what that would look like. That's something that council could get together and, and brainstorm and possibly come up with an idea. I believe there's an economic developer in uh, Chetwin that we have hired and uh, some of the stuff that would have to be passed through her. But I believe it's not us to, to go and say that taxes or that we need to say that give them this, give them that. I believe Chetwin itself has to have some kind of uh, place to draw them in. And it doesn't have to be that we're going to give them taxes, we're going to give them this. Why not have Chetwin a good place to live? We've been here for years. And to progress, we have to have a good place to live in order for, for us to get industry here because along with the industry comes people. And if we forget about people and we just say industry, we got to believe that Chetwin would be a good place to bring families and we will see industry come with that. So I believe we have to have Chetwin as a good place to live. I could tell you when I come, when I come from uh, Prince George, I'm using this as something that when you head east and head north, go up to the Alaska Highway, where do you go through? You come through Chetwin. If you go and go around, you have to go to Alberta. But here, why not Chetwin? This is a pretty local place where you come through. And if we have something to give, Industry passes through here every day. Individuals pass through here every day. Why not here? Why not stop in Chetwin? Like we all do, we all live here. So let's think about Chetwin as a place for people, for industry, for families, and the community, and a good community. I'm surprised you didn't get a round of applause for that. that I, I will. I, uh, yeah, thank you. I 100% agree, Alan. Um, there, there's really nothing. Uh, well, no, I shouldn't say there's nothing. There's not much we can do to uh, to attract the home builders. But if we attract the people and the families, it will happen. Uh, growth will happen. You need houses. People will buy houses once the supply, you know, broadens a little bit. Prices will settle out some. It's uh, supply and demand is always going to run that. Um, and we need home builders and carpenters and plumbers and electricians and everybody to, to move the town to provide these services where it's not just the home builders that we're short of. And it's, uh, it's kind of a global problem right now. Um, uh, just a couple of things what we don't do. do. Does council build something to try to sell? Absolutely not. Um, we deal with taxpayer money and, and business opportunities like that is always a gamble and we cannot gamble with taxpayer money. The only thing we can do with taxpayer money is sure things and that's fixing our infrastructure. In uh, incentives, um, possible. Uh, two things, like, I mean, if it's an incentive, it has to be out there for everybody to take advantage of. If a developer comes in and we give them a break on anything, you're bordering on the aiding of business, and that's fairly illegal, and I don't want to go to jail. Uh, the one thing that we can do, though, is simplify the process. Simplify the building permit process. Um, make it easy. You walk in, here's your building permit, this is how much it costs. Uh, you know, try to cover your building inspection fees and, and not a penny more. Make it as cheap as possible. Make it as easy as possible and make it as carefree as possible. If somebody wants to come dig a basement and build a home or do whatever, make it simple for them. Uh, first off, I, say, I think we have uh, quite a competent crew of uh, home builders in town here and, 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 and a good good to healthy industry for the amount of growth we have at any one time. Um, like has been said before, it, when industry comes, the other people will come as well if they want to do developments and stuff like that. There are things that we can do. There We can, we can team up with, uh, I went to a seminar at UBCM, we can team up with uh, the Makoda, Makoda, I don't know if it's the institute or a committee or what it is, and they, they help out, they, they get the ball rolling. We, the district of Chetwin may have to 
kick in something, for example, land we've been sitting on uh, in this town, the district's been sitting on for years and years and years that hasn't had any use. It, it could be kicked in, the developer comes in, and then other people kick in money as well, like provincial governments and so on. We, we, we can do stuff that's uh, quite viable. But there still are things we can't do. We can't tamper with the tax laws to favor a builder. I did like very much the comments on making this community a place where people want to live. When they drive through town, they should turn their heads and look and say, wow, that's a place that I would like to be. Let's stop, let's wait, let's, let, let's turn in here and stay a day. One of the biggest issues of attracting skilled workers is attracting their spouses and their families. And we do have to make Chetwind a place where people would like to live. It is a great place to live. But not everyone in Kelowna or, uh, or Squamish or Vancouver or anywhere else, not everyone knows that. We have to make this town a place where people want to live. And then they'll build a house. And then they will have kids here. And then our town grows. But without it, it's not going to happen. That's, that's economic development at its best. OK. If elected, how do you plan to include residents in the decision-making process of the town? Well, that's an interesting question. Actually, the residents have elected us to make decisions. How to include them in the decision-making process? They're doing that on election day. You, ha you elect people to make decisions for you because really, with 2,600 people or whatever we have here in town now, you're not going to get that involved in the decision-making process. You, you, can, you can certainly communicate your wishes to us, but at the same time, when we are saying, hey, elect me, we're saying, uh, I, I am saying this is who I am. This is what I believe in. This is the way I'm going to perform if I'm elected. And you can look back over my record over the last 17 years and see how I performed. What are my values? What are my attitudes about taxation? What are my attitudes about how we spend our money? They're, they're, Mel and I don't always see eye to eye on how, how to spend our money. But once we've made a decision in council, that, uh, that decision stands and we stand behind it. Even if we have not agreed in the whole process. And that's what makes a strong council. If we can respect one another enough that when we vote and pass whatever regulation or whatever bylaw it is that we're working on, even if I didn't agree with it and it's happened, that's the bylaw, that's the regulation, that's the decision, and that stands, and we go forward. Having people um, contribute to the, the decisions that are made in the community, I think, is an ongoing basis. Um, every one of us here, I, I'm certain, it gets approached in the grocery store, the hardware store, down at the rec center, at the library, where and, and, and you're seeing a lot of people all the time, and everybody's always taking information in. We also have a lot of um, open houses for any, any major projects that we're doing, and, and everybody's welcome to come in. We, we have uh, very little turnout for, for the majority of them. But there is there is continuous open houses for those uh, for for building permits and so on, or not building permits, building um, uh, yeah projects and um, 
the uh, zoning bylaws and, and everything like that. I think everybody's open to everybody's uh, opinion. Uh, thank you. Public engagement. It, it's definitely something I um, go to all the training sessions that I can uh, at LGLA and, and UBCM the two times I was there. Um, but it's it's tough. And I think you got to speak or I think outside the box uh, nowadays. As, as we've said, uh, we have public meetings and if it involves somebody personally, we, we get um, people there. Um, we're elected to make the decisions, uh, Your Worship. I agree and I disagree. I would agree with you if we had a better than 20% voter turnout. If we had 75% people voting and nobody showed up in the meetings, I would accept the fact that everybody's happy with what they're doing or with what we're doing. But with only 20% of the people showing up, I, I don't think that's the case. And I think that we've reached apathy. And I think that people feel it doesn't matter what they say, it won't make a difference, but it will make a difference because we're you. Um, we're, we're just citizens of the town. We're the same as everybody else here. We, we uh, seem to have found it in our schedules to, to fit into a few meetings a month and make some pretty big decisions, but we are everybody else. So yeah, your, your opinion is gonna make a difference on us. And one example, I might run out of time here, but uh, one good example, we, four more? Oh, we got, we're good. Uh, when the health committee was meeting, um, there, there was a blitz going on in town, and how are we going to get information from people was a big key. So we went to social media and gave away an iPad. That helped. We got a lot of information there, but we targeted different groups of people, and he wanted to see the seniors. I said, you want to see the seniors? Go to A&W. And so he went and set up shop at A&W for about three hours in the morning, and I think he still talks about that to this day, that it was the best information session that he had ever had. So figure out a way to go see who you want to see and, and figure it out that way. Thank you. Uh, what I see right now is that uh, we're answering questions from uh, social media and stuff like that. And if we are to make decisions, I think the people out here right now sitting in front of us, you know, these are the people that are uh, caring uh, for what we uh, hear because anybody could go out there and uh, maybe uh, somebody sent you uh, that. I believe eye-to-eye -eye contact, like one of the candidates says, you meet them, you talk to them. And uh, when you do have five or six people at a meeting, like uh, Clay said before, you, you, but right now I see there's people here and yet we're, uh, we're answering questions from uh, from from social media here. So, and if my calculations are a little bit different than anybody else's, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, and if we answer three questions, we're taking up all, all your valuable time and the valuable time of people. And I like to get the point across that when, when you press the flesh and touch and talk and make sure that you eye contact with you, you and you, that we have a point to say, and we do value your vote, and it's one vote at a time, and you, next, <laughs> future. So that's where I see. I I don't see answering questions from a from a piece of paper. I I love it, but I in another way I hate it because these people come here to listen and ask questions of us, which we will be doing as well. Yeah. The question again, please, Naomi. How do you plan to include residents in the decision-making process in our town? Uh, okay, well, um, I would like, I'm open to engage with the community with transparency and, and share all the information that is available. There's, um, I, I think maybe, well, again, it goes back to the, you know, to only the 20% that vote. So those are the people that um, look into what the what council is doing okay so there's a lot of ways well there's the main way i guess to do that is to read the agenda so you need to go on to the gochatwin.com website you need to read the agenda you need to read the minutes that's how you find out uh what's going on you need to attend the meetings but uh you know more so attend uh, read the agenda so that you know what's going to be discussed at the meetings um and again uh, i as as an elected official, I would make it my business, again, to communicate with the people of Chetwin with transparency and answer all of the questions that come my way. Uh, 
Now, I, I think uh, that the uh, social media is, of course, is a way to communicate with the people. Um, I do have a small thing about the 20% of people that vote. Only 20% of the people that voted for me, let's say, in the district of Chetwin. But when, after I'm elected, I represent 100% of the people in Chetwin, no matter whether they voted for me or not. If they would come up to me and say, Alec, I didn't vote, but I have a problem. I'm not going to say, well, you didn't vote. Yeah. That's, that's a shame. You know. We represent 100% of the people. Whether they voted or not is irrelevant. It's 20% of them put us in here, so be it. Um, transparency, um, we have made no effort to hide anything in council and I suspect we probably never will. Um, we strive to be transparent. That's uh, so important and if you think we're hiding something, come and talk to us. We'll let you know that we're not. Thank you. So the decision-making process, how do we involve the um, residents? So um, I do have to agree with Mayor Nichols. When you elect us, you've made us your voice. And I will always stand up and be your voice no matter, no matter what. But aside from that, I do get stopped on the street. I do get phone calls. I do get emails. And I have that conversation with people. And we are open. Our doors are always open, and we will always have that conversation. Um, public forums. We've had public forums, you know, and, and I wish they were attended better, but that, that is a really good time for the citizens to come out and voice your concerns. Um, our council meetings that we have, those are open meetings, and again, you're welcome to attend, and we would love to see you there and ask your questions and, and become more involved in decision-making process. And um, uh, the social media, I, I think it's great. And it, and it reaches a lot of people, but it also doesn't reach some people who, who find it important to get that information uh, so they don't have access to social media or they don't want to. So it's up to them. Um, so that we just need to, we just, and, and transparency, you're right. Um, I, I don't believe we've ever hidden anything, and I don't believe we ever will either. And it's important to have the community involved in your in our decisions that we make. So, I have to agree with Mayor Nichols as well. I think when you are voted into council, you are representing your community, and they have to have trust in you that you're making the right decisions. That being said, 20% uh, voter turnout really is horrible. And I have my grandmother speaking to me. <laughs> she couldn't vote for so many years. And when I told her I didn't vote the one time, I never lived it down. And from that day on, I have always voted. That's my generation. There's kids coming up, well, Ireland's generation, and the high school kids. Do they know about the government process? Do they know about how important the voting situation is and how we could lose it if we don't use it? Like maybe we need to start with the kids and yes, they can't vote yet, but they will one day, hopefully. Maybe we need to go back to the schools. All right, so this question is for Alec and Alan. If elected mayor, how will you lead Chetwin through this next phase of growth? How will I lead them? <laughs> no oh, no pressure whatsoever, because um, of course it w we lead, but we lead as as a council. Um, I would, I, I will certainly depend on my, the councillors if I get elected to counsel me and to make sure that the direction we're heading is the right one and that we're doing everything we can to attract those families, attract those teachers, retrain those doctors, make sure that the industry stays in town and doesn't pull up roots and take off on us as well. How I'm going to do it? 
Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> Carefully. Um, you know, it's a question I can't answer because every day, every every meeting is going to be something different, and it's going to head you down a different path that you may not have even seen. Um, so to say how I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it by being honest, outright, trustworthy. That's all I can do. I would like to know where the gauge is for the growth. Once we find out where the gauge is, then we have an opportunity. If the opportunity is there, then we start right from the bottom. Uh, youth is always one of the biggest things that uh, we should be caring about. The youth is where we were and uh, what we become today. So if we work on the youth and Jocelyn said, let's go to the schools and all that, sure, that's where they're at. Let's focus. So that's where the growth, if we have to gauge and apply what we know in that fashion and bring it to, to that point where, okay, we've gained this much. But maybe that much is all we need to make us a good community, a great community, an awesome community. So with that, I think our, uh, our whole aspect of how we're going to grow would have to be determined by our council, by you sitting out there today. So that's where I say I'd, I'd like to see the gauge of what, what we can do and where we can go. And I think the star's the limit. If we promise the moon and we get a star, I mean, you know, so be so be it. So I, I get, I get, I'd like to see the gauge first and then uh, get everybody involved. And uh, like I, at the beginning, inclusion. Everybody should be included in what we do in this town. The great thing is, is that now that everybody's been talking, like half the questions are like that we emailed in. So we'll be going to public questions here shortly. So everybody seems to be answering them right along. It's great. So the next one is, what is your thoughts on allowing work camps within the District of Chetwin boundaries? <laughs> um, I get that there has to be a place for these workers coming into town to stay and to live. It's a real shame that we can't have these workers that are staying in these camps as part of our tax base. I think we could really benefit from those numbers. Um, I don't know. There's two rules of, th of thought there. You're bringing them in. At least there's a place for them to stay. They get to know the community. They see what's available in the community. And maybe then their spouse and their kids will follow. So I think the camps are needed, whether I agree or disagree, they are needed. Thank you, Justin. So worker camps have is always the conversation around the table. And um, it's sometimes very long conversations around the table when it comes to worker camps. And, and, and the answer, I think, is twofold. We need... We need the workers. We need the workers, but they need somewhere to stay. And, and my priority is always that the, the hotels and the motels need to be full before the worker camps are. And if we can find a balance there, I'm, o I'm okay with it. But the hotels and the motels are going to be here at the end of the day. The camps are going to be packed up and they're going to be gone. And the hotels and motels are the ones that are paying the taxes. And um, our restaurants, I... I, I feel benefit from the worker camps um, if the worker camps don't uh, feed their three meals a day. Um, so I think the whole town benefits in, in one respect, but in the other respect, the hotels, when they're not full, do really lose. And um, it, it's always a good conversation. And um, I, I don't know what the right answer is. And what, we have worker camps. You all know we have worker camps. And... Um, our hotels are not full, but um, I'm going to say they're over three quarters full from the last information that we've received. What is your thoughts on allowing work camps within the District of Chetwin boundaries? Well, I guess since they're here, my thoughts are pretty well known. <laughs> when I first got elected, there was a camp down by the airport, and I was absolutely dead set 
that it should not be there. It shouldn't be in town. But of course, things, time changes, and so does my mind. Um, we, we couldn't, uh, whether, whether they were in town or out of town, the counts were coming. In town, to me, made a lot more sense because of the sewer and the water hookups. And of course, we, can, we charge them for that. But I, I've been, to, of course, I go downtown fairly regular to the restaurants and the, the other establishments. And if you've been in them lately, you see that those counts are helping our restaurants and our bars and even our grocery stores. My goodness, there's so many people in the grocery stores they don't recognize. Um, so where are my th thoughts on them? Uh, of course, I, when it slows down, I know, and, and you know too, that it, they're in the business. When it slows down, they close up. I mean, this this spring when the breakup came, the hotels weren't very full. They, they were in, I think they were saying they were 20 or 25%, and they didn't want camps because of that. But the camps were closed, so it wasn't the camps making them that way. It was just the time of the year. Uh, the camps have been uh, great. Uh, when the slowdown does come, they shut uh, shut their doors and, and leave and... Uh, and they will do that when the when the boom slows down too. They won't be here competing with the hotels once the the, the boom is over with. So um, they are unnecessarily or, or un unfortunately a, a necessary evil that I have come to embrace. And whether, whether that's good or bad, I'm not sure. But we couldn't be without them. And if we weren't in, if they weren't in town. They would be in the Peace River Regional District, so we would have the camps anyway, either way. I think having camps in Shetwin reflects the economy and um, the busyness of Chetwin, so that's definitely a positive thing. Um, I know there is, I, having attended council meetings and seeing the hotel representatives, you know, there's a lot of conflict there. They've reported that the camps have taken away from them. So that's really difficult because, you know, the camps are necessary. Uh, when you have camps in your town and they're being used, that's a good thing. Your town is busy and they really contribute to the economy. Uh, I trust that this council uh, um, approved the camps um, because they saw fit. Uh, where camps are transients, right? They come here in our town, use our facilities, and uh, I go to the grocery store. That now that we only have one, I only got one choice, anyway. And uh, some of the prices, you know, to me it's transient, and uh, to us we need to do a better job as community members on how we regulate what we do. Uh, my feelings is just that it's a transient thing, and. Uh, I don't really have numbers on the percentage of people staying in hotels, motels, and stuff like that. But I just know that people come in and then they leave, right? And uh, I don't know how long they're going to be here. I don't know if anybody knows, five years, three years, two years. Um, thank you. Uh, shortly, I'm against it. Um, and I have voted against it until this last round. I, I voted for it simply because I just didn't have a better plan. Um, they're here, they got to go somewhere. And I always said, like, if I'm going to vote against something, I've got to have a reason for it. I'm going to have a reason for it, research it, have a position, and take it. And I ran out of reasons uh, to be against it. You, you hear about the hockey tournaments. That can't happen in town because there's no hotel rooms available. Um, you know, not having accommodations for these people was was hurting us too, and you know they we are getting revenue from them. That's a good thing. the The revenue can't be at the expense of our regular taxpayers, though, and the businesses are also taxpayers. So it is a very, very complex and difficult situation, and uh, it is very hard decisions to be made. Um, I talked to some business owners, and they were talking about when Willow Creek Mine used to be in town when they couldn't be in town anymore. They moved 50 kilometers out. They said it was like turning the light switch off. Uh, they were there one day, gone the next. So not having them in town hurts the issues too. Uh, one of my main concerns was the social impact of the camps, and that's a huge part of why I was voting against it. Uh, we went on a tour of the RCMP facility as council and mayor and, and asked them if there was increased um, traffic or, or uh, increased 
I don't know what you call it, malfeasance or anything, uh, any arrests or impaired drivings or anything like that. They said there was really no uptick whatsoever uh, with the temp with temporary workers in town. So again, I'm against it, but I don't have a better plan. So my vote goes for it for the time being anyhow. I voted for the um, work camps in town simply because there was no accommodations available for the people that were coming to the area. We, there, there's, we, we don't have room for, for 600 or 300 or 400 people coming tomorrow. I work directly with a lot of the uh, rental property companies in town and, and they're full. They're full. They, and um, the hotels, I can't speak for them directly. But if you look in all the parking lots, the majority of them are pretty close to full. I, I can't say what their uh, what their vacancy rates are, but the, we we don't have room for that many people in town, and that's why I voted for them. It's just about all been said. Work camps are a complex issue. They do affect all of us in one way or another. I hear it when people go into the grocery store and find the shelves picked bare. But the people are here. They need a place to live. If they weren't living within the district of Chetwind, they would be three miles out of town. As a matter of fact, there is a plan to set up a work camp about three miles out of town and here for a period of a couple of years. That camp three miles out of town will have just the same social and economic effect as if it were sitting downtown, except the Chetwind will not be getting any uh, revenue whatsoever. There will be revenue at the gas pumps and revenue at the bars and revenue at the grocery stores, but no revenue to the district of Chetwind. So in town or out, we're faced with work camps. We also have the situation of Kanuma Cole, who would, is fundamentally opposed to housing workers in camps. That said, he can't find enough houses for them to live in. And being a coal mine, people are not willing to build a house or to buy a house with the prospect of the coal mine shutting down or going out of business within a year or two or three or five. We have to have a place to put the workers in town or out. Might as well put them in town. All right, so it is 8.30 now, so I'm gonna open the floor up to questions from the public if you wanna come up and ask a question and come on up and you can have the mic. Um, you have one minute to ask a question and they can be directed to one person in particular or everybody. So has anybody got any questions? <laughs> if not, I have a few more. <laughs> I need your mic. <laughs> no, here. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to each one of the candidates for putting your names on the ballot. You know, to serve for, po for local government, that's an honor and also a privilege. I'd like to say thank you to the Chamber of Commerce for hosting this this evening. Uh, I'm always interested. I own a business in Chetwin for 23 years. Chetwin's home. I don't live in town. I just live outside of town. Why well, don't I live in town is one of what I'd like to share with you here this evening. Recently, I looked at building a new home in Chetwin. If you built a new home in Chetwin today, it would sell for $150,000 less than your cost of construction. That's a fact. I got these numbers from an appraisal with my plans. So what can be done about that? Well, there's where I think the new council could possibly help. And that is you have a community plan that says you support affordable housing. But when you review your policies and your bylaws, they contradict that. So I can elaborate on that somewhat. If you were to look, for example, at progress on the way to Dawson Creek, 
Nine houses. In three years, they built four new ones. Why? Change in policy. Right here, I live on Carriata Road. I looked to put my house in town on property I owned. It wasn't feasible financially. So this is the sort of thing that I'd like to see after council was elected and conducting an audit, possibly an external audit, on your policies to alleviate some of those issues. <laughs> I know, but we have to get to it. He can ask again, but everybody's got a time limit. Has, has anybody else got a question? Back to, back to Larry. Do you want to go back to Larry? We can go back to Larry. <laughs> um, one of the reasons that I hear from people that have retired and moved away, the reason they don't stay here is because we don't have a functioning hospital. And that's probably the biggest reason people leave or people don't want to move their families in here. We're not even set up to deliver babies. So young families coming in who know they're going to be starting a family can't even have their family here. They have to drive or ride in an ambulance for an hour to go and do that. So I think one of the problems is the hospital. And I want to know if there's anything we can do here to fix that. Is that directed to anybody in particular or everybody? Right. Well, I have an answer that you're probably not going to like. You know, we've been working with Northern Health for the last seven years and then the ten years before that. We bring this up all the time. Maternity here in Chetwind is one of our fondest hopes. But it gets shot down repeatedly by Northern Health. There are a number of reasons for that. They say, well, there are not enough babies born here for, to keep the doctors in practice. Well, uh, I can't answer that. That's, that's something for the doctors to answer. What if you need anesthesia? We don't have it. I can't answer that either. That's for the doctors to answer. I mean, once upon a time, we delivered, we delivered babies here from 1970 up until what? Into the 90s, I believe it was. Um, things change, and I, I, I just, I don't have the answer, except that we have been continually a thorn in the side of Northern Health on that issue. Um, other issues are of the hospital as well. What about a, what about a functioning uh, surgery? Well, you've got to keep the, have enough sur um, practice there for the doctors to keep in, keep their skills up. We, we know, some of us can remember what happens when doctors lose their skills. We've experienced that here in Chetwind. I don't have an answer. But we have kept this before Northern Health for years. I can honestly say this is one of the issues that prompted me to run for council was, was the health care system here. And everyone, everyone that was on council has been on this like right, right from the get go. There hasn't been an uplet there. Um, I'm trying to figure out some nice words to say about Northern Health, and I can't. So I'll best, I'll, I'll best pass the mic. Uh, maybe I can expand on a, a few things. We're we're on Northern Health, and again, as it's it's tough, um, and there is. I mean, the, the health care system has a budget, too, just, just like our town and just like your houses. Um, and it's, it's getting tough. It's getting very expensive. And we have to hope and, and um, assume that they're, they're doing the best they can. Again, we vote for our MLAs, and, and they're, they're balancing a budget. And we, we have to hope that they're, they're doing the best they can, too. But, um, uh, Becky, one thing you brought up is, is seniors. And... As much as family retention is important in Chetwind and, and families are, are very important, we'd like to keep a few more of our seniors, I think. Um, and rather than having them head down south, it's pretty warm at lots of times in the winter. And uh, I'd like to see them 
stick around a little while longer. So other services on top of healthcare. Um, I know, uh, I think our, our housing is good. I actually just, uh, we moved Grandma Sylvia up a couple of years ago um, from Saskatchewan. And she loves living here and it has everything she needs. She needs doctors, prescriptions, um, tests run just like everybody else and it's working for her. So uh, maybe it goes beyond the healthcare um, activities, uh, more housing if it's needed um, and other things like that too. Uh, no expansion on anything they said. I just want to say what I want to say. You know, this, this stuff about uh, health care and northern health, I believe there's a bigger part of uh, what we do on what the council does. There's a whole bit. If somebody wants a camp outside of Chetwin, do they put it outside of Chetwin? So these people that are outside of Chetwin, they have to come aboard so that we are carrying a bigger stick when we go see Northern Health. If that Northern Health person, people, government is the issue, then we should deal with that person. Sure, council's been doing the best they can, all they can, when they can. But if we have these people that are bringing in these 300 people, 600 people, these people are the ones with the pockets deeper than ours. And if they have that, doesn't matter where you're, all, where you're at, what you do, money talks, bullshit walks, okay? So that's just the way it is in any place. So I believe if we have the right people in those uh, positions that have chairs in big places with uh, the money, we as a small community can lead them in that direction on Northern Health and say, look, our MLA is not doing it about it. Let's try something new. Let's progress. Great ideas. Um, I don't know if they would work. Uh, definitely our MLA should uh, be helping us out there. I don't know how, maybe, like you said, maybe it is, you know, somebody in Northern Health and maybe a change needs to be made there. I like what Clay said, maybe it's beyond Northern Health. Maybe it's, you know, for seniors getting a regular transportation to and from Dawson, Prince George, Fort St. John, wherever they need to be, getting that on a regular basis. Maybe that'll keep some seniors here. Um, yeah, don't know about that one. Yeah, like uh, uh, Mayor Nichols said, uh, council has been on Northern Health steady. Um, we've been polite, we've been rude, we've been pushy. Uh, the first time I ever went to a Northern Health board meeting was right here in this room and I walked into a room that has more people in it than we have here right now on the board of Northern Health. I'm sure <laughs> that's not free. But, but they can't seem to find the money to spend on the health but they do have it to spend on the boards. And there's these boards all through BC, or there isn't just Northern Health, there's Southern Health and Island Health and you name it. it, it, it there's, I would just like to see how much money is being spent on that. And if, st slow that down a little bit, you know, put a leak, we got a leak in the payroll, let's patch it. And we will, I promise if I get elected, we will put, continue to put pressure on but you, you as a, uh, can put pressure on our MLA. We do it, but if every one of you starts dropping a letter into Mike Bernier, he gets a letter a week from everybody in Chetwin, he's gonna start listening. And it's not just Chetwin, it has to be, I mean, this isn't just Chetwin's problem. Northern Health is a problem no matter, the health boards are a problem no matter what part of British Columbia you go to, it's the same story everywhere you go. The health, Northern Health or whatever name you want to put on it, has a problem. How do we fix it? We've got to put pressure on our MLAs through councils, through yourself, everybody has to, trust me, if enough people get on it, something will be done. So Northern Health and um the district of Chetwin, we have had a great working 
we've had a working relationship for the last many years. And, and you know, I think we've moved mountains with them and we've got things from Northern Health. And, and I think we really need to be thankful for what we did get from Northern Health. But on the other hand, our hospital has always been on the back burner. And, it's an, and, and you're right, Becky, it's an important part of this community. Workers won't come here because if I'm in an accident, um, where they, you know, they called it the golden hour, where are they gonna take me? They're gonna take me to another hospital or somewhere else. So it is really important that we, that we continue to work with Northern Health to do something with our hospital to make it more than what it is. I feel they'd rather take a chance and do nothing and then have the odd baby born once in a while where that could be at more risk than actually having it a functioning hospital. Um, I think we have to start thinking a little bit outside the box and maybe extend a couple wings in our hospital for seniors and acute care and things like that. And, and that would help um, the situation a lot. But health, the, the hospital, the Chetwin Hospital will always be on the radar of the Chetwin Council. And, and no matter who you uh, elect, it will, it will be in the forefront of, of uh, their discussions, so. Northern health is an issue in every community, and you're right, like I've heard it from many, many different people. Um, our hospital, yeah, there was a baby born here, what, two weeks ago? Yeah, two weeks ago. There was a um, patient transported from Dawson Creek into Chetwin because Dawson Creek's hospital was full. Chetwin had a bed available. That's the first time I've ever heard of that. Maybe we're starting to move up. I don't know. I, I have no experience with this, so I really can't offer an opinion other than my own from our own medical point of view. But I agree with Becky, and I think um, when we first moved here, that hospital, although it wasn't operating, you couldn't get an operation done, it was functional. We did have, you could have a baby there at that point. Back then, they did have Are there any other, any other questions? So here's one that didn't get asked. Is there a plan to bring fiber optics to our community? <laughs> so, so Mel and I just uh, got back from UBCM. Well, actually, Mel and Mary Nichols and Ernest Fanner and myself. And we had a really good conversation with the company that is bringing the cable from Prince George to Dawson Creek. Uh, I don't understand it'll be tomorrow or the next day, but in their future, which I believe, Mel, correct me if I'm wrong, is um, about a year, there'll be a junction box in Chetwent and it'll be available to the TELUS and the East Links of the world to connect to that fiber optic should they choose to. So we could have the option um, to do that. And I do believe that if these companies decide to bring fiber optic in, um, there could be a cost to the taxpayers. And But what that looks like, we have no idea. So, Mel, would you like to add something? Carol Newsom had some more information on that. Anybody got any questions? Nothing? If you could change one thing in the District of Chetwin zoning, what would it be and why? Do we mean zoning or zoning process or that's uh, an... The question was just zoning. So let's say zoning, let's say zoning process. If you could change something with the zoning process, what would it be and why? Well, let me sort of give a simple answer to that. Zoning is generally uh, changed at the request of a uh, citizen. So if you have an idea that you want this area rezoned for something, bring your zoning request to council and it will be evaluated and uh, it may be changed or not. With every request for rezoning, there is a public hearing. Every person affected has a chance to say yes or no, and here's why. So. 
I, I, I wouldn't say tonight that any areas should be rezoned, but if you have an idea that wants to be rezoned, bring it, bring it to council. Well, I guess um, if I could rezone one piece of land in, in Chetwin, and, uh, and it's not slated for any kind of development, and it seems to have a responsible owner, but the green space behind Crown Sub, I really do wish that that had been zoned rural when they, when they set that uh, neighborhood up. Like I say, there's no immediate plans to do anything there, but um, if, if the trees were to go away, if that green space were to go away and behind the Crown Sub, it would be fairly devastating, I think, to the, to the neighborhood. All right, so it is now 845, so we will do closing statements. So again, unless there's any more questions, does anybody have any other questions? No? Okay. So closing statements, we'll do it in reverse order. So the first up um, will be Jocelyn. I got to stand for this one. So we've heard lots of different voices tonight, heard lots of different opinions, and I really hope that you've taken some of our opinions and made your own. Maybe you've had uh, another, oh, that looks interesting, maybe I'll vote for them this time. Who knows, maybe you just had some education tonight and maybe you got a night out. Um, a transparency and truth, two concepts that can save so much time and effort. I hear this so much coming into the library right now. Um, the council's decisions, like I said, you guys are getting really good and hopefully I'll be part of that one um, at, at publicizing them, putting them out on social media, putting them out on chat TV, putting them out on the radio. I mean, it's nice to see. We all, since we don't have a newspaper anymore, we don't know how to get that information out anymore. So using the social media channels, huge. I love it. Um, if you choose to elect me to council, I'm not going to promise anything. I promise to not say that word. <laughs> I am going to be your, your voice. I want you to be able to come to me with your opinions, your concerns, your, your complaints your compliments. Maybe there's something good that we're doing that you want to say something about. I will be your voice. I will take that to council. I will be your ears and I will bring back any answers to you. I've already had people that have been phoning and asking me questions and whatnot. I don't have the answers right now. I fully admit that I am naive and I am new, but I am willing to learn and I really truly hope that I can count on your vote. Thank you. So next up is Janet. Thank you. Uh, if elected, I would be representing you. It's not just about how I see the world or what I think. I will attend and actively participate in as many council and associated meetings and activi activities as possible. I commit to doing the research necessary to make informed decisions on matters that appear before council. I promise to ask questions, think critically, and work passionately to bring a prosperous future to the community. Thank you, and on October 20th, please vote Janet Work for council. All right, you can pass the mic on down to Merlin. Ready? Yep. <laughs> well, thank you very much for turning out tonight. If you choose to elect me, you can probably expect performance much like we've had for the last years, except that I won't be in the mayor's chair. One of the most important things for local government is for members of council and the mayor to understand 
the boundaries that exist. And there are boundaries. And if mayor or council crosses those, we find a council that very rapidly becomes dysfunctional. Now, if you want progress in your community, you have to have a staff, uh, administration and staff, that know their roles and are supported in their roles by your mayor and council. When your mayor and council forget their roles and start crossing over into administration, you end up with a council with a council with a government that is chaotic. Work does not get done. Your name gets known around the province as a community that is in trouble. And we've had a number of those at the last election. And uh, I certainly don't want to see that happen in Chetwind. I think we have an excellent slate of candidates here. And it's interesting to see, it will be interesting to see how you vote and who is elected. But whoever is elected, keep your boundaries clear. Back to Rochelle. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming out again tonight, and thank you for the questions. So I'm seeking re-election because um, I want to continue to represent the citizens of the municipality as a whole. Mayor and Council have worked together constructively and cooperatively over the last, well, seven years since I've been on Council, with many different perspectives at the table. And that is why we make such great decisions, is because... We listen and we care, and um, and we've done it in your best interest. But I also have to say that we haven't done it alone because we really have listened to you. We may not go out and say, you know, we heard you, but we have because we've heard it through public forums, through emails, phone calls, and emails, and maybe just in passing in those conversations that we've had on the street. So I want to thank you for being interested and caring enough to make a difference and to help us move this forward, com uh, this community forward for a more viable and sustainable community. So over the next four years, I will continue to dedicate my time, my energy, integrity, and enthusiasm to address the issues and concerns that we face on a daily basis, finding solutions and making them a reality. We need to con uh, continue to encourage new business. <laughs> You're funny, Jim. He's making faces at me at the back. So we do need to continue to encourage new business and encourage developers that want to invest here. Uh, we need to continue to build on strategies in place for our roads and infrastructure. And we need to continue to, to have this community to have access to health and education um, that they need and deserve. Affordable housing is something that we're going to see in the forefront. and Well, it is in the forefront, and we need to do something about it. As of October 17th, marijuana is going to be legal. And there's a, still, there's a whole lot of work yet to be done with the local government and the province and the federal government to figure out what the taxation is going to look like in the legislation over the next few times. So thank you again. And I would be more than honored to represent you again for the next four years. All right, Alec. Yeah, thanks everybody for coming tonight. Um, I'm, uh, if elected mayor, I promise to stay within my boundaries. Uh, when I listen to the councillors that have run and the ones, the new ones that are here, I can see that it will be not hard. They're, you, you can see they're willing to work, step up and, and uh, take the risk and join us in, in making the right decisions for the community. Uh, affordable housing, yeah, we, it, we're gonna we're gonna have to address that as soon as uh, we get uh, things back up and running, and after the election, uh, that's one thing about it. Uh, to the to the new councillors that are elected or the new mayor, um, you you have to hit the ground running. There's no okay, let's get up to speed here. It's let's go. It's not. Chetwin's not waiting for us to catch up. So, um, again, thank you very much, and uh, I hope you see uh, your way clear to vote Alec Brownlee on October the 20th.
over to Alan. Yeah, I'm going to say the same thing. No, no. Actually, actually, actually uh, uh, for the health care, which is a concern to everybody, uh, my three kids were born right here in Chowan. I'm certain people up here, their kids were born in this hospital. You know, and to deal with uh, health care is a pretty big factor on what I believe in and uh, community. Uh, to paraphrase a great uh, leader of the, this century, he says, uh, it's not what you've done for uh, you know, your community, but what, you, what could you do for your com community? And you know, don't, don't just sit there. And these people up here are not just sitting there. And so are you for listening. So anyway, with that, I'd like to say healthcare would be one of my biggest things and infrastructure and uh, how we deal with uh, people. And it sounds like our mayor is like a person leaving office. So I'd like to thank you, Merlin, for, for your wisdoms. And uh, yep, and thanks, Alec, for running. And, and it's one vote at a time, right? Anyway, I'd like to thank you for that. And I, I really appreciate community efforts and uh, what we do. Okay, thank you very much. And it's over to Clay. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks for coming out tonight, and thank you, Naomi, for putting this on. And thank this cost me a hundred bucks last year, so you saved me. It's nice. Four, four years ago. Yeah, right, right. Four years ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know I keep bouncing back to basic services, but in my term as counselor, I've learned that providing these services to our citizens is our primary focus and main responsibility. Thankfully, Chetwin has a strong financial position to achieve these repairs and upgrades. Council can't control everything. For example, since the start of my term, Chetwin today has more businesses than they did four years ago, but this has very little to do with anything we did on council. Uh, it's a product of there being a demand for these businesses and our community supporting them. And it's really as simple as that. There have been major repairs to our infrastructure though, which I'm proud to stand up here and take a little bit of credit for. It's amazing to me how these systems were repaired or replaced with no interruptions to our system. Like how does a water treatment plant get completely gutted and replaced and nobody would even notice. But that's what you as a taxpayer deserve and should accept nothing less. Chetwin provides many opportunities to make a good living here and have a high quality of life. I believe, all of our, I believe our town has everything we need to live and be happy and healthy. You know, it's funny, I write these speeches and columns in my living room, lots of times when my wife and, <clears throat> excuse me, wife and daughter are around. And I'm fairly proud of a few of the things that I've penned over the last few years. But I got to say that in my opinion, the most brilliant comment that ever came out of my living room was from my daughter, Ireland. Just the other day, we were talking about Chetwin in general, and she said, and I quote, we have everything we need to be happy and extra. I really think we need to listen to our youth more. Everything we need to be happy and extra. Thank you for attending and good night. And lastly, Mel. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight as well. And um, I'd like to, like to uh, thank the management and staff and contractors at the district for making us all look good the last four years. Uh, they've done an amazing job um, getting grants, millions and millions of dollars that they've got are for our community and they've worked very hard at it. Um, I would like, every, like you to vote for me on uh, October 20th. Um, I will be a voice for your tax dollar. Thank you. Wonderful. So that wraps up our evening. Thank you so much for everyone for attending this evening and thank you to our candidates for coming out. Um, your love for your community truly shows just by throwing your hat in the ring. So we really appreciate that. Um, just a few things. Um, our November luncheon for the Chetwin Chamber of Commerce is going to be with uh, MP Bob Zimmer. Our luncheons are open to the community to attend. You don't have to be a business owner or anything. You just phone me up and book your spot and pay for your ticket and away you go. You get a great lunch and uh, you get to listen to a keynote speaker and it's usually a good time. 